Let's bring in Roger Lee, head of UK equity strategy at Investec to join the conversation. Uh, Roger, um, first up, a uh, broad question. What do you think is the, the primary driver of equity markets right now? Oh, thank you and good morning and thank you for having me on your show. Um, we believe the primary driver for equities, uh, and we're in little doubt of this, is, is U.S. Treasury yields. And uh, particularly over this last year when you've seen such two very distinct periods of yields, rising yields in the first quarter, falling yields in the second quarter, and you saw very two very distinct periods of performance over those two periods. And, and certainly in the first quarter, you saw uh, stocks and sectors that you would expect to be positively exposed to rising yields outperform significantly energy and financials. And then in the last four or five months, as yields has fallen, you've, you've seen the stocks that you would expect to outperform in a falling yield environment do just that. So uh, we are in little doubt that uh, the single dominant feature for equity markets at the moment is, is, is US Treasury yields. You know, it's interesting you note the performance of the banking sector because it, it outperformed yesterday in the U.S. and also in Europe, 3% for the Stock 600 banking index yesterday and then um, strong gains in the U.S. Goldman Sachs, the biggest mover in the Dow Jones index. Um, what do you think is priced in at this point for banks? Well, I think the moves yesterday are sort of difficult to disaggregate between whether this was some response to the Fed or whether it was just as a relief following the Evergrande situation. And obviously, the banks were very heavily sold off earlier in the week. So I think yesterday's move is, is possibly difficult to disaggregate between the two. But you know, certainly from a UK perspective, we don't believe the banks are remotely pricing in a rising yield environment. In fact, most of the FTSE banks are still trading at significant discounts to their book value. We don't think necessarily that the market is fully pricing in their ability to increase dividends and buybacks. So uh, financials actually are one of our key picks. And uh, certainly if you start to see a rising yield environment, which is what we are expecting to see, then you would expect the banks to perform from here just as they performed in the first quarter. I was going to ask you about market distortions, but you've led me down a different path, so I'm going to follow you on that one as well. Um, the price to book valuations, I've looked at them pretty keenly. Uh, in the banking sector over the last couple of years and seen some quite ridiculously low valuations, certainly compared with US peers. Is there a possibility, though, Roger, rather than trading below what their market value is, actually that the value um, that the assets are marked on the book is just completely spurious? Well, I mean, that was certainly the case, wasn't it, in, in the financial crisis when the book value actually had very little bearing on what they actually turned out to be. I, I think we're in a very different economic environment now. We're in a lot more of a stable economic environment, despite the fact of, uh, of the pandemic. So I have to say I'd have a lot more comfort over that book value uh, now. I'd also have a lot of comfort, actually, that the provisioning that they put in at the start of the pandemic is probably very, very aggressive now. And you'd probably expect to see that being written back over the coming quarters and the coming uh, reporting periods, as you've started to see over the last reporting periods. So I think you can probably look at the book values with more confidence, and you can certainly perhaps expect to see some write-backs of provisioning coming forward uh, over the next few months. So. Yeah, probably. I think we're in a very different position now to where we were at the start of the financial crisis, clearly. Well, that's interesting because you actually think that we're in the same position. We are not in the financial crisis, but that we were at the turn of the century as well, when we had some quite ludicrous valuations out there in other sectors. This is not about the banks now, Roger. Um, you think the market distortions are quite extreme in terms of, and, and, I, and I loved your comment about the, the market cap of companies valued over 20 times sales is now around $4.5 trillion as of June 20. Uh, June 2021, a big part, and that's similar to where we were back at the turn of the century. That is a, a big red flashing light, isn't it? I, I, I think so. I think you know. I think it's very difficult and, and really quite dangerous, and probably, probably too simplistic as well to talk generically about bubbles and generically about distortions, but. I think there are clearly some distortions out in the market at the moment, which you know you have to think have come primarily from this ultra low bond yield environment we're in. And one of those are unprofitable companies, whether tech or otherwise, but unprofitable companies that are being valued at, as I said, you know, 20 times sales. I mean, that is by any normal reckoning is a huge valuation multiple. I mean, when I first started in the business, companies on trading on five and 10 times sales were considered to be 
uh, very expensive. So the fact now that we've got a market cap out there of companies trading above 20 times, which is very similar and has only ever been repeated in that 99-2000 period, you know, I think has to be a concern. But I think we have to look at this in the broader context, though. Yes, there are some distortions out there that are, are probably as a direct result of the low yield environment. And it's not just ultra value companies. It's also maybe government bond yields, high yield spreads, etc. My credit team tells me that that's, you know, they're at historic lows. So there are distortions out there. And it's not just in the equity market. But I do think that those very highly valued unprofitable companies are vulnerable if we did see a significant move in yields going forward. Roger, let's talk about the parts of the market that you, you could say are um, more uh, attractively valued. The UK market has um, attracted a, a lot of private equity interest in recent months. And one of the chief reasons that's often cited is that it's cheap relative to other markets. Do you consider the UK market overall cheap? Uh, yes, is the simple answer, we do. Um, I think we have to be slightly careful, though, when we're looking at sort of headline P multiples of the UK market, because clearly they are influenced by several big stocks. And you were just talking about Glaxo uh, on the news a couple of minutes ago. But you know, there are several big heavyweight stocks in the UK market, the two major oil companies, HSBC and Glaxo, that you know, are cheap by their historic measures. So I think looking at the index as a whole, it's probably easier to look at it on an equal weighted basis. And if you look at it on an equal weighted basis, which kind of removes some of those heavyweight distortions, then you still get to the point where the UK has underperformed the euro stocks, has underperformed the global equities. And therefore, you know, I think you can argue that the UK market is cheap. And there are a lot of reasons, perhaps, behind that. Uh, but the UK market is cheap. And inevitably, when we see these anomalous valuations, if the public markets don't value UK assets appropriately, the private sector invariably does. And that is what we're seeing at the moment in terms of this sheer volume of M&A transactions that are happening in the UK. Roger, Bank of England due to deliver its latest policy decision later today. What are you going to be looking out for? Well, I'm not, I'm not sure. Our economists don't think there's much to see today, to be honest. Um, there may be uh, movements. Uh, Michael Saunders was the only, economy, only member of the MPC to, to, to vote for uh, curtailing the bond purchases. There may be one or maybe two other members who join him. But quite frankly, there's only sort of less than 50 billion sterling of bond purchases to go before the program ends at the end of December. So I, I don't think there's a huge amount to see in terms of today's meeting. What, what will become interesting from a UK perspective as we roll into next year is whether the MPC are one of the first major economies to raise interest rates. I mean, we're currently looking for interest rates to tick up uh, in May next year, but that could easily be February. And I, so I think not much today, but definitely if we start to see more data coming through, more positive data coming through, then the pressure on the MPC to raise rates sooner and be the first of the major economies to raise rates, I think could be quite interesting going into next year. Roger, you, you've said a lot there, and I want to tie one or two things together. The cheapness of the UK market, the cheapness potential on the price to book value of the broader banking sector. Compare that with what you were saying, and I agree with you, five times sales on uh, companies when I started the business uh, seemed quite a fruity valuation. 20 times sounds quite worrying now as well. Are we going to have a, a two-way pull in this market? And also, what would be the catalyst be for the pricking of the bubble uh, of those massive valuation stocks trading at 20 times? Yes, I think I, I like the word bifurcated, actually. And I, I, I think that's exactly what we're seeing at the market at the moment. You know, there is clearly pockets of value, as we've just been discussing. And there's clearly areas that look, uh, by any historic measure, extreme. And in terms of the pin that burst this bubble, uh, I can only think it will be a reversal of the monetary intervention that we've seen to date. It will be the market appreciating that interest rates are returning, you know, not necessarily to extreme levels, but interest rates are returning to something like we saw at the start of the pandemic. And, you know, I, I've used this quote, and I hope it's not too much of a cliche from, from Chuck Prince back in 2007, when he talked about when the music stops in terms of liquidity, things get complicated. We are about to see, we are on the cusp, not necessarily of that liquidity stopping, but we're on the cusp of seeing a reversal of that liquidity. And one can only think that things will get complicated. 
I think it will get complicated. Thank you very much. Roger, very sensible talking to you today. I enjoyed it immensely. Thank you very much indeed for that. Bifurcated, what a great word. Underused and very much appreciated. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers, Roger. Roger Lee, Head of UK Equity Strategy at Investec.